So welcome, everyone. And let me uh, begin with our deep thanks to the Coast Salish First Nations, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. We are so honored by your presence here, witnessing by your blessing from our elders. It's, it's just a, a real honor to have you with us today and for welcoming us to your territory. It, we are so grateful, ever grateful, for your hospitality and your acknowledgement of the importance of us doing this all together. Thank you for being here today. And I'll say Haichka Osiem as well. So we have the good luck today as well to be basking in the afterglow of a BC Lions Grey Cup victory. We have, all right, give it up for the Lions. And a very rare streak of December sunshine as well. So clearly, uh, the world is, is uh, smiling on Vancouver today. And there is a crispness in the air, too, that I think focuses our attention and maybe dissipates a little of the heat from the election campaign. And that also uh, gives us a chance to reflect on the, a little more clearly on the contributions of our outgoing colleagues before we say goodbye to them. Suzanne Anton said this well a few weeks ago when she said that politics was anything but a thankless job. There is a real reward in making a difference for your neighbors and for the city. And I know we all know there's sacrifice as well. To our outgoing elected leaders, you have given this city a tremendous gift. Your time, your dedication, and the very best of yourselves. And to all of you on behalf of the city, thank you. I want to... I noticed that Councillor George Chow, or former Councillor George Chow, now has a career in photography with the Press Gallery. So, congratulations, George. But I want to uh, express Vancouver's gratitude to our outgoing city councillors, our school board trustees, and our park board commissioners. And especially like to thank Suzanne Anton, David Cadman, uh, George Chow, and Ellen Woodsworth for their service. You all serve Vancouver over several terms of office, and that service was invaluable, and I know that we will hear from you all in new and different ways in these coming years. And today is also a chance to say hello and to welcome the newcomers to council and to our park and school boards. The voters have given our council four, uh, four new voices uh, on our council, Adrian Carr, Elizabeth Ball, Tony Tang, and uh, George Affleck. And uh, I don't think I've given a speech in the last four months without mentioning Tony at least twice, and I'm glad this one <laughs> won't be an exception. But... We are thrilled to have uh, new passionate voices on council and we are looking forward to all working together starting later this afternoon. We're here today in one of Vancouver's, uh, Vancouver's newest and most uh, exciting places. This is uh, the former Athletes Village from the 2010 Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games. This is Creekside Community Recreation Centre, an incredible facility here. And like many of uh, Vancouver's most special places, it, is, it came about really because of many years of collaboration with the community, with those who built it, with all of the people who, uh, who put incredible effort into creating this space, a, a place of community on our waterfront. Vancouver has been built by people with that same spirit of collaboration, a place uh, of people with so many diverse backgrounds and points of view who have worked together for the common good and the good of our city. And the willingness to reach across the gaps of difference and to find the common ground and common purpose, that is one of our great strengths in Vancouver. The people of Vancouver practice it every day and you expect nothing less from your politicians. You know that we have different opinions and you expect us to express these differences honestly. You expect us to listen to those differences and to respect them and you expect us to work together effectively in good faith. And that means acknowledging that we can learn from each other, we can learn from the community. It means trying new things without rejecting them out of hand and simp uh, for simply being new. A changing city calls for new ideas and innovative solutions, and Vancouver is a changing city. Just a few years ago, and almost unnoticed, we passed a remarkable threshold. For the first time in Vancouver's history since the founding of the city, the majority of our people have a mother tongue that is something other than English. And whether that's Cantonese, uh, Tagalog, Punjabi, uh, Mandarin, French, Japanese, Spanish, 
Korean, Hindi, or any of the scores of languages spoken in our streets here today, you will find uh, that this is a real sea change for our city. It is a very city, a different city from the one that I grew up in. It is a much more diverse, more confident city, and it's one that looks out into the world with an eye to opportunity, that looks at the future with optimism. But it's also a city that faces great challenges. How we manage our environmental footprint in one of the most beautiful natural settings on earth, how we fight poverty and homelessness in the midst of great wealth and development, how we keep our neighborhoods safe and vibrant when they're faced with relentless growth, growth pressures, how we ensure that the next generation of Vancouverites will find this a city where they can afford to learn, to live, to work, and raise a family of their own. These challenges are finding a voice in many different ways and from many quarters, whether it is through community groups and nonprofits, through protest, through vocal businesses, day-to-day -day conversations of, that people are having, there is a new civic vitality emerging in Vancouver. And we are elected to a platform that speaks to those concerns. It is our responsibility to engage with those voices in an open and constructive way. During the past three years, we battled a global recession and we laid a lot of groundwork to make positive change. And over the next three years, we will build on that. While many other cities around the world are struggling, uh, Vancouver has the opportunity to lead, to blaze a new path of innovation. We'll take the ideas, the ingenuity, and the foresight of Vancouver's people and translate them into action. Our vision includes making this a city, a city where people can afford to live. Tonight, new shelters will be open thanks to an agreement that we reached on Friday with the BC government. Yes, there was... There was some disagreement about how best to proceed on this, but our partnership has remained very strong over three very tough budget years. And it doesn't matter whose name is on the shelters as long as the doors are open and the beds are warm and safe. The organizations that keep those doors open and are doing some of the most urgent and crucial work in the city uh, need to be thanked. And it's inspiring as well to see how dedicated our city staff and staff at BC Housing have been to make all of that possible. We know that shelters are not homes, and only a larger sustainable supply of low-income housing will keep this city on track to meet a goal that means more to many of us than any other. This council may have its political differences, but I trust that we are united in our conviction that in a city as prosperous as Vancouver, nobody should ever be forced to sleep outside in our streets. So we recommit to our goal of ending street homelessness in Vancouver by 2015. Affordability though, is a much broader issue and my wife Amy and I have had many late night conversations uh, wondering, just like many parents in Vancouver, will this be a place where our kids can afford to live and thrive? The answer must be an emphatic yes. And over the next three years, we will focus the resources and tools of City Hall on our affordable housing and homelessness plan. And today, I can announce that I am striking a task force on housing affordability, including advocates, architects, developers, building owners, uh, financiers, citizens. They will identify ways that we can increase Vancouver's supply of affordable housing, both immediately for urgent needs and also for the long term. Can City Hall solve our affordability crisis in three years? No, but we are not powerless, and over the next term, this council will take action. Now, of course, uh, tackling affordability needs to be in concert with creating jobs in a dynamic and resilient economy. Our vision includes creating good-paying jobs in our diverse array of industries. We'll work to keep taxes low and support small business. We'll invest in our creative economy, protecting artist spaces and creating new studio space for our cultural entrepreneurs. And we'll promote Vancouver as a world-leading destination for people and investment. We will start with uh, my commitment to ensuring that Vancouver hosts a new investment summit early next year. 
We will bring hundreds of investors, entrepreneurs, and urban leaders from here and around the world together to focus on the business of city building. Our city is a model for the world on sustainable urban development, and we need to not only showcase that global leadership, but also to put it to work to strengthen our local economy. Our vision also includes the safe, livable neighborhoods that we all love so deeply. Over the next three years, we will make this city friendlier to Vancouver's families, from securing over at least 500 new childcare spaces for our youngest residents, to providing new facilities and staff training to support our eldest. And we will start by enabling selective free programming at community centers so that families' financial means don't stand in the way of enjoying the health and recreational opportunities that Vancouver offers. Our vision includes making Vancouver the world's greenest city by 2020. During this last council's term, the people of Vancouver came together in historic numbers to help chart a course and a collaborative strategy that is called the Greenest City Action Plan. And over the next three years, we will implement that plan with a scope that includes over 85 separate initiatives, ranges from new green spaces to local food to creating green jobs to better clean transportation options. And we will start on that by working with TransLink to secure improved late-night bus and train service that our whole region needs urgently, and continuing to push for rapid transit along the Broadway corridor. And the agenda that is this ambitious can't be the work of Council alone. So we will draw on the strength of our community organizations, of business and labor and social profits, on the, ing on the ingenuity and the direct involvement of the people of Vancouver. And we do that by finding new opportunities and venues for citizens to participate, new ways for the city to listen, new forums for conversation. We do that by opening our doors, both physical and virtual. One way we've started is opening up Vancouver's data and our new technologies. And right now, you can see that in simple things that make everyday life a little easier, like a web app that gives you a um, text message or a Twitter to let you know when garbage day is and what waste will be collected, whether that's compost or recyclables. And we want to do more along those lines, with measures ranging from a new city app to making the city's information and data more accessible using 311 service. We want to bring City Hall closer to you, as, as close to you as the nearest laptop, public terminal, or smartphone. And we will continue to push for real elect electoral reform, reform of Vancouver's election process, including donation limits and disclosure, an important step that needs to be taken. Our work and our agenda begin today. And this winter will be very busy. But I have great faith in this city and in this council. There is talent and goodwill from all sides. The people of this city want us to put that talent and goodwill to, the work, to work on their behalf, and they fully expect us to work together. The people of Vancouver know that it can be easy to tear down and criticize and tougher to create and build, but they also know that this isn't how you embrace the future. They know the future belongs to those who have the courage to try new things and, yes, to admit mistakes, but also to persevere in the face of setbacks and adversity. I had the privilege of honoring former Mayor Art Phillips last term for his service to the city. And 40 years ago, he told us this in his inaugural address. The citizens of Vancouver and other major cities across Canada now realize that progress can't be measured in the height of buildings or in the amount of pavement. The idea is now at the core of how this city sees itself. Our people know that Vancouver's bright future relies on our compassion for each other on our commitment to all those who come next, and on our determination to succeed together. That's the strength of this city. That's the message and the mission that we have all been given by the people we serve. And that's the mandate that we accept today with our gratitude to the people of the great city of Vancouver. Thank you.